go forth, Father, that we can comprehend, we can understand, and we can put it into practice. And Father, we want to thank you that we know that our weapons are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. And we just give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we've been talking about growing up in Christ and coming into the fullness of Christ. And, uh, but there's stages in that. There's stages in that. How many remembers when you were four years old? One, two, three. How about five years old? Six years old? But you remember as you moved along, it was progressive. You just didn't boop, grow up like that. You know what I mean? So we've learned that uh, that's a process. We are all in a process. Now, as far as our salvation goes, as far as hell and heaven, that's settled. As far as, uh, as, far <coughs> as us being non-believers, no, that's settled. I mean, we are saints of God. We are the church. We are the children of God. We have our new identification now, and, uh, and we walk in that daily. But even in that, there's a growing, there's a maturing, there's a process that we are all in. And I want to give you three things about growing up spiritually. <clears throat> First, there's the babyhood. There's a lot of manifestation that as a pastor that I see in people, if when they're in that stage, I know they're in that baby stage and uh, they're gonna whine, they're gonna murmur, they're gonna complain, I'm hungry, I'm this, I'm that, and they act a certain way. But as a parent, we don't get all shook up. As a pastor, I don't get all shook up. That's the way babies do. I mean, he's learned that in the natural. Now think of the natural and think of the spiritual. <clears throat> and then there's that next stage, which is childhood. We grow up to be a child. And uh, especially in our teenage years, we get a little, most people get a little rebellious. I don't think I ever did. <laughs> You'd have to talk to my dad and mom about that. But there's a lot of rebellion. In, in that, and I, I, but it's the same thing in the spirit. And I want to say something because when you come into uh, that stage of of uh, <clears throat> childhood, you think you know everything. And someone said, if you, before your child becomes an adult, ask them any question that you have because they know everything at that point. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> you can't tell them hardly anything. <clears throat> That's a dangerous state, by the way. And uh, sometimes we want to fly out the nest when we're not ready. Many of the teenagers are like that. Then you come into that manhood. And that's a different stage. That's a place that you carry responsibility. You have wisdom. You don't get shook up by every little thing that comes along. Uh, and that's where God's bringing us, where he can use us now as mature saints of God to carry out his purpose. Now remember, when you're a baby, it's about me. When you're in a child and a teenager, it's about me. But when you grow up into Christ, it's about God. Okay? So keep that in mind. <laughs> Now, I want to read a scripture here, and, and, and when I read the scriptures, I get revelation. Uh, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4, verse 16. I want to show you something here that sort of backs up what I'm saying. And while we're looking at that, I would like for everybody to get one of these right here. I need a lot of time, but I'm going to do the best I can with the little bit of time I have. Now, <clears throat> when you read this, therefore we do not become discouraged, utterly spiritless, and exhausted and wearied out through fear. Now, 
I would say Paul, <clears throat> Paul was definitely not a baby there and he was not a teenager. How many think that he was in the manhood right there? Yeah. So when you become into uh, your manhood, that's the way you start thinking. Now, though our outer man, notice this, is progressively decaying and wearing away. That sort of could be depressive. <laughs> But see, you're now mature. Now you realize that this, this body is temporary. You've grown to the point to know that one day we're gonna have a glorified body. So you're not all worked up about this body decaying and wasting away. And uh, I don't care how much paint you put on it. <clears throat> It'll hot it. <laughs> be, be gentle, Bob. I'm, okay, let's go on. <laughs> not yet, but look what he said, yet. Our inner self is being progressively renewed day after day. I want you to see that now. You've got to see that because you've got to understand what's going on in your life. Our inner self, the real you, uh, the part of us that's redeemed, the new creation that we are, the inner man, is being progressively renewed day after day. I would, I would say that that's true, but I think Paul has in mind that you've got to feed the inner man. Feeding that inner man is very important. So if we're not careful, we'll get head knowledge, <coughs> but we've got to get our spirit man progressively getting stronger and stronger. Now there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, a wounded spirit can't bear anything. So listen to me now. The stronger your spirit gets, you'll be able to stand against principalities and powers. You will be able to stand against various things in the natural that come against us. That inner man can reach a point where he won't be moved. How many understand that? All right. Now, we're not fussing if you're not there yet. It's so important that, that we understand that the building up of the inner man. <laughs> how many people, how many in here has ever lift weights? Look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, you did that for the outer man. You know, the inner man, <clears throat> when you come up against problems, it's actually like lifting weights. If you've got a lot of the word of God in you, then you're going to be able to lift or handle anything that comes against you. Because let me tell you something, most everybody in here has had many things come against you. Many things. I guarantee you, every one of you in this place tonight, including myself, can share about things coming against us, but we're still alive. It's because that inner man is being renewed day by day, and we've learned to stand regardless of what. Because we know that in the, the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 10, when you go right on down, when you've done all, what? Stand. When you've done all, stand. And sometimes you've you got to remember that. Now, let me say this. The church has occupied a rather passive role as if it had a defeated attitude. <coughs> Individually, as individual members of the body of Christ, we want to grow and mature into that manhood, into the very image of the Son of God, which the Holy Spirit is, is, is bringing us into. But overall, when you think of the church as a whole, a lot of people just have a defeated attitude. And you're not going to win no battles that way, and the enemy is going to run shotgun over you. Now, everybody got their hand out there? Let me, re let me read this again. The church has occupied a rather passive role as if it has a defeated attitude in the face of the enemy that rules in this world. 
I believe that God is saying to his church, rise up and rule in the midst of your enemies. And of course, we know Romans 5, 17, that God has given us the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to reign in this life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, now everybody's got this faith talk there, piece of paper there. The first part, not the second part, but uh, I want to see, see dealing with negative thoughts. So if you're going to rule and reign in this life, how many knows where the battle is? Somebody, everybody point to me where the battle is. We know where the battle is in your mind. Satan interweaves negative th thoughts into our minds, which if believed and acted on can develop into strongholds. That's what a stronghold is. Uh, one of the things that could keep us from receiving God's abundance is a stronghold in our mind. Well, we're just not worthy enough to, re to be loved. We're not worthy enough to be loved. Now, when you start dealing with people, you will see categories. You will meet a lot of people that do not love themselves. That was one of my uh, problems when I was just a child. I didn't love myself. And if you don't love yourself, that creates a lot of complicated problems in your life. <clears throat> You're not going to be able to come into the fullness of Christ. Now, I came to this place, if God loves me, who am I not to love what he loves? Think about it. Think about that now. If he loves you, who are you not to love someone that he loves? Now let's take it a little bit further. If you don't love yourself, he loved you enough to die for you. And who are we not to love someone that he died for? Is it getting through? Now, you might as well tear that stronghold down in your mind right now. Everybody say, God loves me? Okay. Now, we set up patterns in our lives. If you think that God doesn't love you, then this thing is going over in your mind and we know that thoughts produce what? Attitudes. Now you have an attitude that God doesn't love me and now it's hard to receive love from people. Are you listening? You would, you would, you, you'll fit. Most people that I have dealt with, they withdraw from people. They withdraw, fearful of them. They withdraw. And the whole object is the enemy to get you to withdraw or us to withdraw to the point where we don't even want to pull the curtains open in the morning. I've seen people and we've dealt with people that literally pulled the shade and it stayed pulled. They were so fearful and they didn't know why they were hiding. It was all right in their mind. How much strongholds do we have? Now, the object of coming to church and, 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 and getting under teaching like we teach here is that we want to be exposed. If you're going to hide your strongholds, ain't nobody going to help you. Come on, love me a little bit, church. You've got to be willing to be exposed. But you see, if you don't feel like your love, you hide. Are you out there? Yes. All of us. None of us. I'm talking about Bob Tilton too. I've walked this thing out for years. I know. Backwards and forwards. So you withdraw. Withdraw. And that's the scheme of the enemy. That is the scheme of the enemy. And those that have children, you have to watch how they withdraw sometimes. I notice the kids out there as they play. I notice you kids too, by the way. You're doing right good. I'm proud of you.
I see one withdraw. Move. They're out there playing, and this one's over here. What are you doing over here? Don't, I said, don't you want to play out there? No. Now, how many know something's wrong? That reveals to me something is wrong. How many see that? All right, see. <clears throat> now, uh, can I be so bold to say, is that you? Now, Bob, you're getting too. Uh, listen, if you're going to get set free, you've got to call an ace an ace and a spade a spade. Come on, love a pastor that's brave enough to put it on the line. <laughs> Just backing up and running has got to stop. We got to find out what makes me tick. Because you're going to find out, as you find out what makes you tick, you're going to be able to help other folks. Because <laughs> most of them are the same way. How many of you know we all came from the same stump? What was that stump's name? Adam, I think it was, wasn't it? Adam? You remember Stump Adam? <laughs> now, See, the devil knows all of this. He knows all of this. Now, we want, we want to be a church here to help people, and we do help people. But first, we've got to help ourselves. We've got to reign and rule in this life, in this body first. Okay? Now, <clears throat> look what it says. Satan interweaves negative thoughts into our minds, which, if believed and acted on, can develop into strongholds. A stronghold is a mind set impregnated with hopelessness that causes us to accept as unchangeable something we know is contrary to the will of God for our lives. <clears throat> We've dealt with people that uh, were scared of authority. How many in here has been scared of authority? All of us. Now, <clears throat> if that continues, if that continues to be a stronghold in our life, we aren't going to be brave. Now, we are to respect authority, but not fear them. Okay? Because, see, that fear will cause you to do what? Withdrawal. I feel right comfortable preaching in this building. Billy Graham walks in. Oh. <laughs> huh? Come on. Oh. <laughs> I mean, know what I'm talking about. Oh, how he knew you, but the Lord has set me free. Come on in, Billy, and sit down and shut up and have a seat. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. All right, now I'm just exposing some strongholds that in your prayer life you pray against those things. Once the Lord shows you the strongholds, you know, don't think you're inferior, that you're some weird person. See, that's all the enemy's uh, tactic is to paralyze us. But be bold, be strong, be courageous. God says, I'm with you, I'll never leave you, I'll never leave you, I'll never leave you. He says that in Hebrews. I think it's chapter 13, I like that. All right, now let's, go, let's take our, our chart here now. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The object is now to get our inner man strong. But how do you get it? that inner man strong? That's what we're going to talk about. All right, look at what it says now. If we believe his lies, that is Satan's lies, we will begin to doubt God's word. Forget who we are in Christ. So if I come up to you and I say, who are you in Christ? What could you tell me? Would you identify with the old Adam more? Or would you mind be so renewed that you would tell me everything you are in Christ now as a new creature? Think about it. Who are you? Say, we've got to stop and think. One of the things that I had to get used to, and I see some of you the same way. Oh, 
Bob, that was a good message. It was the Lord. It was the Lord. What's wrong there? What's wrong with that? Hmm? Think that through. What's wrong with that? No, it was you, but it was the Lord in you, motivating you. So it was you and the Lord, because the Bible says we are partners with him. But we do that because we're fearful that, why, why do we do that? Anybody want to suggest why we do that? I remember this one minister years ago, people would come up, his name was Bob Mumford. Bob was a tremendous teacher. Bob, that was a good message, good message, you know. Well, it was the Lord, it was the Lord. Yeah. I mean, it, it disturbed the whole atmosphere in the place by just, and finally he came to the place, just say, the Lord said, just say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now when you get home, you get on your knees and say, Lord, all those, those things I, I give to you, Father. I give you the glory and the praise. But we're so scared within us because really I'm not good enough to receive any praise. Now I know there's a balance on all things. You know I'm a man of balance. But you know what I'm talking about. You almost, you know, you can almost fight with people when they come up and say, boy, that was a good, man. now I don't have any problem with that because they, <laughs> ain't nobody come up, hardly ever tell me that, but some folks have a problem with that, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I think I could uh, say every word that Jesus said and nobody would even recognize it, you know. Yeah. Now what's that stronghold in me? Now tell me. Huh? Huh? <laughs> See, we give ourselves away. All right. So we're talking about strongholds and the enemy. See, we don't realize it, but these strongholds have been building up in our minds all these years. And now we come to the place that we know that we're new creatures in Christ, that, that we're partners with God. Uh, we, we have a part. God has a part. And we work together. And all of us uh, uh, are children of God. And we all make up one body and uh, we, we just get free of all of this other stuff and we can flow and, and be happy and smile. Now look at this. And focus on our hopelessness. Jesus stood up against Satan's lies, Matthew 4, 1, 11. And Satan was forced to leave because we are in Christ. We can do the same thing. Now, that's our new identification. <laughs> we are God's representative. Now, I'm going to give you a little illustration of something here because the time element goes by so f fast. Most of us know how our government operates. All right. We have the federal government, for instance. There are three departments. How many of you know there's three branches? Three departments. One is the legislation, legislative department, which is... Congress. They legislate laws and they pass laws. Then you have the judicial, which is the courts, interprets them, okay? Then the executive, executive, which is headed by the president, is in charge with the duty of enforcing them. The legislative never enforces the law. The judiciary <clears throat> never enforces the law. This is the sole responsibility of the executive agency, which is the president. That's the church. Calvary's the victory. It's done. Legally, it's finished. Legally, it's complete. But we have to enforce it. Just like the policeman out here. He don't make the laws. What does he do? He enforces the law. If you're out there, you're speeding. He comes up. He didn't make the law. He enforces it. That's what the church is designed to do. That's why we take authority 
That's why the enemy comes against us to paralyze the church. Now remember, this message goes out into the world. I'm not just talking to you guys. You you understand, a lot of this you already know. But we're trying to reach the world with the gospel now. We're carrying out the the, the orders of our Lord and Savior to, to go into all the world and preach this gospel of the kingdom. That's what we're doing through technology. So we've got to understand that. So something happens in your life, you've got to stand and realize you're the policeman. Enforce it. When the enemy comes against you and trying to overshot, run shotgun over you, ain't no need to holler for somebody, for, for the, for the uh, Congress or for any, anybody. No, you, you're the enforcing agent. You enforce the victory of Calvary against principalities and powers. How many understand what I'm talking about? You got to understand that. So that's what we have to keep in mind that when we stand up and pray, we are the enforcing agent taking what was accomplished at Calvary and enforcing that against the enemy of our souls. Okay? I want to show you in, on our little sheet here, we have uh, the eight R's. All right, since the above is true, we need to recognize their source. All right, now, how can you tell when Satan is operating in your life or somebody else's life? All right, you ever heard these words, you are condemned? or you feel like you're condemned, or, and you walk around condemned. Well, you're not gonna enforce Calvary by feeling condemned, but the enemy puts that condemnation to paralyze us. Anybody listening? Now we've all experienced this. If you've experienced it, raise your hands. Yeah, all of it. That's, that's the way it works. All right. You will never get victory. That's what the devil will say to you. Now, how many know that's a lie? You already got the victory. It was one in Calvary. So are you going to take that? If you do, you're going down. And you'll walk around with that stronghold in your mind that I'm no good. I'm, you know, I, I don't have any victory at all. Uh, nothing goes my way. Ba 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 ba. Say, when people come to you, you must recognize that they've been listening to the wrong voice. And if you're going to help them, then you've got to expose that and bring it into light. Do we understand that? Okay. See, now, in your own heart, that's what you want. In your own life first. You are worthless. Now remember, thoughts produce attitudes, attitudes produce what? Emotions. Now think of it. You start thinking about you're worthless. Now you've got an attitude about yourself, you're worthless. And now it gets into your emotion, now you feel worthless. Now how much power do you have against the enemy? Every one of us in here, I'll guarantee you, I know it like the back of my hand. We've all have come against these type of strongholds in our minds. And it goes all the way back many times with, with our families, and they didn't know. You'll never be worth anything. I'll tell you that right now. You're just like your daddy and your granddaddy. He was the same way. Next door neighbors the same way. You got to, and we just, our, our, and our parents don't mean to, but they, seems like they're on the devil's side. But see, they don't have this wisdom that we have here. Now we got to break those strongholds and break out of that and say, gosh, I'm going to receive St. John 10, 10. What did it say? The last part, what did the last part, 10, 10? Abundance. Wow, put it on the board real quick. Now we were talking about something keeping us from, from really receiving the abundance which brings life to us. 
St. John 10.10. 10. The last part is what we want to now. Look at this. You are stupid. Now the enemy is going to, in your mind, you're stupid. And once you believe, see, if we speak what we believe, and if you believe you're stupid and you speak what you believe, that's what you get. <laughs> now, now you have an attitude. I'm just stupid. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. Now it's in your emotions and you feel rotten and it goes out in your action. Simple, not complicated. Thoughts produce what? Let me hear it. Attitudes. Attitudes produce what? And? You must learn that. I got it written down here. I've given you sheets on that. Please learn that. That is an absolute law. I'll give you another law. You touch hot fire, a hot stove, and it will burn you. Absolute. You can argue with it if you want to. You touch it, it'll burn you. We must take these teachings that you're getting here, if I may be honest, more seriously and realize they are eternal truths. All right? God does not love you. Now, you're going to walk around um, feeling unloved. Every day, every day, every day, every day, you've heard that for 30 years, you become a Christian, and all of that is in your, in your psyche. And it affects your attitude about yourself. Then somebody comes along and say, Hallelujah, you are now a brand new creature. And you think, no, my mama said I was a no good bum. And you act that out in your life. Very simple, not complicated. See, they program us. The devil from way back there has programmed people. Now we come into the faith. Look at the last part. Now look at the first part. The thief comes only in order to steal, to steal your joy, to steal your life, to steal everything he can from you. And destroy us. I came, Jesus came, that they may have and enjoy life. And have it in abundance. To the full tilt it overflows. Now, once we begin to receive that, and you start stacking up your bank account. I mean, there is a limit in which, you know, when you see other people needing help, don't become so greedy and, uh, and, and say, well, that's why I'm, I'm sec that's my security. No, now what? That's your God. <laughs> See, there's a balance on all of this. You got to realize, no, I'm, I got to have what I need to keep things going, but I'm going to help others along the way. And Susan and me have always done that in our lives, in our Christian lives, even before we had abundance of anything. And many, and many of you have done the same thing. Now, let's go back to see what God says. What does God say? All right, the enemy says you are condemned. What does God say? No condemnation to those in Christ. How many of you see that? That's living by the word of God. All right, you will never get victory. What does God say? You always have victory in Christ. You are worthless, that's what Satan says. No, God says you are a chosen vessel for me. Yes. Satan says you are stupid. God says you have been given Christ's mind. God does not love you, Satan would tell you. My love is for you is everlasting. See, you're gonna believe something, but what you believe develops your attitude, your emotions, and your lifestyle. Very simple, it's not complicated. Hmm. Be brave, be strong. Now, let's look at the, uh, go down the line, refuse the suggestion. Everybody say refuse. refuse. All right, the suggestion. Now remember, it's gonna to come to your mind comes into your mind 
Since Satan is the source of all dishonesty, his suggestions will be a deception. So whatever comes in your mind, you, that's why you have to know the word of God. And if it is not the word of God, you refuse it. I'll guarantee I got a rubber snake back there. Now, Ms. James, just relax. <laughs> and I can give it to, uh, in fact, I killed a snake. I killed a snake back here yesterday. Uh, you want me to get a bigger snake? <laughs> All right. One day I'm going to give it to you and you're going to say. <laughs> I killed a snake up on the hill yesterday. Rely on the, on the spirit for an uh, appropriate scripture. So if the enemy says you're not love, what are you going to say? You've got to know the word of God. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You speak what you believe. I believe I'm a child of God. I believe that I am victorious in Christ. All right? Repeat that scripture. Proclaim God's promise in full assurance of faith. Renounce any hold Satan has on you. Counsel the consent given to Satan. This breaks his hold on you. See, if we agree with Satan, whatever we agree to on earth, it'll be done for us in, in heaven. We've got to fall out with all his suggestions. Now, how much, think about it, how much has been going through your mind all day today or this week or this or month or the last year? What? How much overhaul needs to be done in your mind? I'm talking to Bob Tilton too, because I work on this every day. I practice what I preach every day. Am I perfect? No, but I practice it. And if I don't, Susan reminds me. And that's what I want. I tell her, I say, don't let me get by with it. If I say anything negative about anybody, you Stand up and say, Pastor Bob, what did the pastor say? Mm. See, I want correction. I don't want to be somebody walking around here as a man of God with, 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 and, and don't practice what I preach. See, I practice what I preach. That's right. I'm an, we're honest people. Renounce any hold Satan has on you. Speak it out. Satan, I command you in the name of Jesus to loosen my mind. Now, sometimes you will have to go into spiritual warfare because the enemy will come against your mind and you'll fall asleep in church. Absolutely. Fall asleep in church. How many has ever done that? Look at that. How many know I love you? Uh, I'm going to give the deacons a new job. You ever seen one of these long whips that used to ride the camp, you know, used to hit the horse up there? There you go. Listen, I've had to fight that same thing too. Especially when you go to a funeral, you know. When you start snoring in church, we're going to have to get some deliverance around here. <laughs> All right, stay awake. I know you've worked all day. I've got five minutes and you can go to sleep. <laughs> all right. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit totally to God. Resist the devil and he must flee. Renew your mind. Establish a new way of thinking by meditating on God's word. Rest in Jesus Christ's finished work. As joint heirs with Christ, we share his rest and his victory. Hallelujah. Now, you can read the other side of that when you go home. Put this on your refrigerator and know it and know it well and check yourself out. Now I want to tell you something about a young man. And we've had many experiences with people over the years. I got word that this young man was in the Navy hospital and uh, he was wanting to commit suicide. And they asked me would I go up there and visit him. His name was Billy. So I went up and introduced myself to Billy and talked with him everything. 
And uh, when somebody wants to commit suicide, what does John 10, 10 say? Huh? Somebody tell me what John 10, 10 says. Right, right in, just right in front of you. See, the devil can't kill you personally, but he gets to kill yourself. Or get somebody else to kill you. So you got to know the, 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 the schemes of the enemy. Yeah, and you got to be bold and you, gotta be, you, gotta, you can't entertain those things. You cannot entertain those negative thoughts that the enemy gives you. You must rise up within yourself. Get your spirit strong and you stand against those things right now in Jesus' name. Somebody thank you, Pastor Bob, I needed that. That's how serious it is. So I explained to Billy what the problem was. I diagnosed his case and told him it was the enemy trying to get him to kill himself because he wanted to commit suicide. Gave him the word of God and explained it all to him. He started practicing it and got better and they discharged him out of the, out of it. I said, now you must come to church. You must come to church and, and get more teaching. Get your inner man strong where you can stand against that principality and power that's trying to take you out. Well, he came for about three weeks. He was doing real good. I went over everything with him, prayed with him. He was doing great. Then, he, then I can tell when people start sliding, they quit coming. Miss one service, then they miss another service. Oh, I said, oh, God, I, I know the pattern. <laughs> I know it like the back of my hand. This ain't good. Well, about, for about a month, he came and was doing great, and then he quit coming. And a month later, I got a word that, that the family was at, at the house and everything. Billy was there, do, it's like he was doing great, you know. And uh, the, all the family was having dinner and everything. They said, where, somebody said, the sister said, where's Billy at? Well, he was here a little while ago. So she went looking for him, went upstairs. Billy, where are you at? She opened the closet door and he was hanging in the closet. He hung himself. And you don't tell me, I don't, I don't get mad at the devil saying, you look at me. I am mad at the devil, what he does to God's people. And you might think I'm rough sometime, but I ain't to be rough because I love you enough to rub you right. Jesus does not lie. Satan has come as a thief to kill, to steal, and destroy. And we are to enforce Calvary and say, no devil, you're not taking my life. And you look back in your life and you can see times when the devil almost took your life, but somebody was praying that knew how to pray against principalities and powers, knew how to enforce Calvary on your behalf. Now we have to come to that place. See, it, it, it's, it's so, it, 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 I'm, I'm a kind man. I hope you know my heart by now. But it can get like a religious thing just coming to church. Uh, it's Wednesday night again. But we're in a real battle. Yes. This thing is far beyond anything we can conceive. God has plans. And he expects the church to come into that place of ruling and reigning. And taking an authority and enforce Calvary by preaching the gospel, by intercessory praying, and delivering people from the spirits of darkness. That's our job. But we have to be strong enough to get our own lives straight. Make sure we're ruling and reigning in our little world. Then God can use us to enforce Calvary, Calvary against principalities and powers. Not many Christians know how to pray against the enemy. Not many. But I'm trying to teach it. Be bold. Be strong. Be courageous. The Lord says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, the enemy has come to kill, 
But God wants us to have that abundant life where we'll be so free where we can set other people free. And if we're bound ourselves, we ain't going to set nobody free. How many love me? That's good. It's good to know I'm loved. But we love one another and we take care of one another. When, when I lose somebody on my watch, I don't like it. Did, did Billy go to heaven? I'm going to leave that up to the Lord. I know what the Lord told me. And the Lord told his mother the same thing. When I met her, she said to me, Pastor Bobby's in heaven, isn't he? I said, yes, the Lord told me that. Does everybody that commits suicide go to heaven? No, I don't believe that. But I know that the enemy can get your mind so off course that you don't even think you're a human being. Now listen to me. You won't even know you are a, you will be with so withdraw more every day. Because you know why? I've been there. And that's how I learned to fight. Church, we got to learn to fight. Because the devil's killing our children and stripping them into the world and they're becoming everything but what they are to become. Because we didn't know how to fight. We knew how to tell them to shut up but we didn't know how to fight in the spirit for them. So, I want to encourage you. Get that inner man progressively day by day. Let it get stronger and stronger. A wounded spirit, you ain't going to have no fighting spirit with a wounded spirit. You need somebody else to pray for you all the time. And that's okay, we do that. The whole object is to get people to a point where they can stand and become that enforcing power of the church against principalities and powers. Because Paul made it very clear in Ephesians 6. Put on the whole armor of God. Because we fight not against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits, spirits of darkness. And you'll recognize people that are influenced by them, too. And you'll begin to intercede for them. Okay, I hope we learned something. Did we learn anything? Put that on your board.